And then after I'm in the trade, then I prefer to journal at that, at that time because it's uh, a little more relaxed. I've looked at all the charts already and I can just take my time with the journal. Hey, it's Walter here and you're at the Think Profit Podcast where we're going to help you develop a rock solid trading confidence and avoid the potentially endless cycle of system switching. Right, Hugh? That's right. We're going to help you develop a wealth mindset, develop a trading strategy that fits your core personality and help you overcome the obstacles that stop over 90% of traders. All right, Hugh, sounds good. You ready to go? Yeah, let's do this. Hey, Walter, um, I have a question here. I know some people like checklists. So what's like a trading, check, trading psychology checklist you could give people before they start trading? Yeah, well, one thing that I would say is you want everything to be a routine. If you want to keep good records, which is a good idea of your trades, what I like to do is I don't like to look at the charts first thing in the morning. I like to have a routine before I get to look at the charts, right? And so I don't usually make um, trading decisions until after 9 a.m., um, which is evening time in, the, in New York and uh, really, really late over in London, late, late evening. Um, so, so I like to go through a certain routine. So what, what I will do is, like, if you're going to use a journal and keep uh, data points on your trades then you're going to use the same journal, right? <laughs> In fact, I even go to the thing of like, when I buy a new trading journal, I'll actually put all my trades in that journal. And then when it gets to the end, I'll go and buy another one. And I always, I keep them in my bookshelf. What I like to do is like have it, it's almost like an annual journal. You know what I mean? Mm. Where it has the trades in it. And like each journal is different. It's hard to explain it, but like you can get these journals that have different covers, you know what I mean? So it's not just they're all the same. Mm -hmm. So it's almost like when I see that book that has that printed, I should go get one really. But when, when you, um, when I see that thing, it's like, that's my trigger. So like when you have a habit, you always have the trigger and then you go through the ritual of the habit, right? So for, with trading, what I want to do is I want to get into that habit of, as soon as I see the journal, I know that's part of my habit, right? Now I'm need to record. And there's a, something about writing something down that's different. I know a lot of people that like to take trading journals with typing it, you know, they, they'll use it in a spreadsheet or whatever, but when you write it down, it's, you know, it activates a different part of your brain. It's actually really good if you're trying to remember things to write it down. Mm -hmm. So what I'll do is I'll write down, what is the system? What is the pair? You know, what's the market? What's the time frame? Where's my entry going to be? If, is it right now at market or is it like at a different level or whatever? Where's my stop going to be? Where are the targets? And I also like to put like a score on how well I got in, right? Mm -hmm. And also how well I got out. And I also like to give it kind of like a, um, like a, almost like an intuition score. Like how well do I feel that this is going to go, right? Mm -hmm. So what I will always do before I sit down, like I hate sitting down and making train decisions first thing in the morning. I don't want to be, you know, I don't want to start like, I don't want to, I don't want to be that guy who's addicted to the charts. You know what I mean? So I want to go through other things, go through other like, you know, hang out with my kids, give them breakfast, you know, stuff like that. And not really just like jump right to the computer. You know, mm -hmm. I used to be like that. So my checklist is first, I need to be in a good mental state before I go to the charts. And another thing is using like a binaural beats or a meditation before you actually analyze the charts can be useful. There are other things that you can use that are along the lines. It really depends. Some people might find it a little bit arduous to have like the journal going through the whole, you know, 20 minute, 30 minute thing before you can actually look at the charts and they'll skip that. Right. Mm -hmm. So sometimes that can be useful if you slice that in when you're already in the trade. So you're trying to relax and stick to your rules, you know, using like the, I have a Forex hypnosis track that is kind of like about sticking to your rules and stuff like that. So you could use that also when you're making trading decisions or when you're in the trade. But so what I like to do is have a good mindset, be awake, not groggy, not late at night, not early in the morning. So I like to be that. I like to have my journal with me so that I'm writing it down. And it's kind of like, it almost is a confirmation that I'm taking a, a really good trade by writing it out. Sometimes you'll catch yourself writing it out and going, wait, well, hang on. Is this really, I don't know what this is. You know what I mean? If you mm -hmm. can't put a system on it, then you're just like using gut right? Mm -hmm. So you, or you just have a feeling like it's it, the retracement's over and I'm going to get in now or whatever. So my checklist would be in, have the right mindset, have your training journal. Also, I like the idea of walking away after putting it in the, um, 
platform. So if I put my orders in the platform and whether or not they're triggered at market or they're, they're waiting for a you know, market to hit them, I don't like watching that. I find that really stressful. And maybe you limit yourself to the number of times you can check your charts too. That might be another thing. If you're impulsive and you have impulsive tendencies, you might say, I can only look at my charts, you know, in the morning and then, you know, once in the evening and that's it. I can't, you know, be always be on my phone and stuff like that. If that's, you know, if that's part of your, if you're trading higher time frames that can work like 12 hour or, or above. The other thing is you have to learn at the end of it. And what I mean by that is not about like trying to uh, fix what went wrong, you know, system wise, but more about you and you, the trader. And what did you do? How did you react? So for example, I'll give you an example. So I'm in a trade right now where I took four trades on one day and all four of them that got triggered, three of them were at market. One of them, I was waiting for a bit of a retracement. So three of them have been stopped out now, right? <laughs> but one of them is, d- did not get stopped out and is actually just rocketed in my favor and is really close to the first target. Mm. Okay. And hopefully the trailing exit, if it keeps going, the trailing exit can, that trailing position will pay for a lot of the, the you know, the other three losses, right? We'll see. We'll see. We don't know, but we'll see. But what's interesting about that one is that one was looking really bad, just like all the other ones were. In fact, one it looked like one of, you know, like it was going to get stopped out. But I said, look, I'm just going to stick to my rules. It's either going to, I could get out right now and save myself 20 pips or whatever, or I could just let it ride, you know, see what's going to happen. And then I've learned over time to be more of the let it ride trader. And so when I look back and I write in my journal, when this trade is all over, I don't know what's going to happen to it, right? It's probably going to hit the first target though, at least that. <laughs> when I look back at my journal, I will give myself a very good score, provided that I follow with the, the trailing exit and all that, all the rules for the way that I manage that trade and the way that I exit that trade. Because I didn't exit when it looked like it was going to you know, pop me out and come down low enough to pop me out. It, everything about the chart said, this is a loser trade. Mm-hmm. But today I wake up, I look at it, Actually, I only looked at it 20 minutes ago. I didn't even you know, see it until then. Boom, it just took off. So that's what I would say is that you know, for your trading, I, I like the idea for your checklist, as you say, I like the idea of having a routine of looking at you and trying to be introspective. And how are you relating with your strategy? How do you interact with your trading strategy? And I also have to guard against being in a, in a bad mental state. So a lot of people, like when you work at home, it can get really old. I mean, it can, trading can get really boring and it can get really, you know what I mean? So you have to guard against that. And um, so I have to make sure that I'm not super tired, that it's not super late when I'm making these ideas, you know, these decisions or too early in the morning or whatever. So it's really important that I have uh, a clear mind, you know, Mm -hmm. and that could be just as simple as doing some stretches or going for a walk or whatever, before you actually sit down and look at the charts. I know it's kind of a long winded thing, but that's my checklist. And I'm, I'm curious to hear what yours is. Yeah, cool. Um, Yeah, I think I agree. The routine is really important. Like when we used to play soccer, they would have the same routine before every game. Right. And I, I never realized the importance of that until later. And uh, I guess those like those rugby guys or whatever, do do the, the haka or whatever that is. Right. And it just gets you in the mood. Yeah, it's a similar thing, like get in, this, get in a good mental state. So either a meditation or using like an inner, the inner balance app or one of those um, recordings, whatever I feel is the best that day. Yeah, when I get in the trade, I make sure I have the journal open. And then um, I'm actually better at journaling after I enter the trade. So I just be sure that I get the screenshots in the beginning and then uh, write down a few notes about why I took the trade and you know what I expect out of it. And then the system, yeah, the system's a big one. Uh, that's why I kind of prefer the like more of a computerized system because then you can put, you have a system that you have to fill out in that little field, right? And then that's, um, that helps you double check, okay, I'm actually using a system or am I just you know taking random impulsive trades? And then after I'm in the trade, then I prefer to journal at that, at that time because it's uh, a little more relaxed. I've looked at all the charts already and I can just take my time with the journal. Yeah, and maybe like once a week or once every two weeks, I go back in there and take a look at the journal. I do the similar thing that as you do, like I give it a score from one to four. So um, I believe in one to four because you can't have like an average, like a just an okay trade. It was either overall good or overall bad. So I just do one to four to keep it simple. Yeah, then that's about it. Just maybe monthly re- review the results and the, the statistics, but uh, that's about it. Keep it simple. 
Yeah, that's interesting. The scaling thing that you're talking about, because that's like a really big survey design and stuff in psychology. They, they, there's a, like the debate about that. You know uh, what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, no, I understand why you're doing it. It makes perfect sense. Like they found that using a one, a one to 100 scale or using a one to 10 scale, you get the same, like there's no added advantage hmm. <laughs> when dealing with, hum- with humans. When you're yeah. asking humans to decide on a one to 10 or a one to 100, there's no, and what you were saying is like, there's no middle. So it's like a forced choice to either, you're, you're basically forcing yourself to say it's either mostly good or mostly bad, right? By mm-hmm. giving it a two or a three. Yeah, that's really interesting. And, and the theory, like the, the, the theory behind that would be like, overall, like let's say you have thousands of trades in your journal, Okay, you get to that point, you have thousands of trades in your journal. If there's a true average, then you'll have like an equal number of, of twos and an equal number of threes, right? Mm-hmm. That the average is in between that, you know what I mean? 2.5, mm-hmm. right? So that yeah. a 2.5 2. is actually the middle of a one to four scale, right? Yeah, it is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. Yeah. It's weird. It's weird when you don't have zero, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Do you find it hard to choose sometimes if it's a two or a three? No, it's pretty easy. I think it's a lot harder to choose between like, like on a 10 scale or like a 20 scale, yeah. right? I think you, that gradation yeah. is like really harder to define as opposed yeah. to, okay, that, you know, I really messed up. I kind of messed up. I did pretty well. It was a perfect trade, right? That's, that's what yeah. it comes down to. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. I think of it like A, B, C, D, and F, like mm. in the old, like the, in the American uh, grading system. I think of it as that, like I kind of think of the trades as that, like a four or five, and then the three is like C, you know, and then a two and then a D and an F. But like, if you're really trying to force yourself to learn new habits or to, to improve in a certain area, I could see where you would want to have to make that choice, whether it's mm-hmm. on the good side or the bad side, I can make, it makes sense. I mean, they had, they had studies where they would ask someone to write a line. So they would have a line on your piece of paper, like, this is like total good. This is like total bad. Mm. And you were just supposed to put a slash like with your pencil, like, mm-hmm. and then they would measure it. <laughs> they would measure it in like, you know, centimeters from the beginning to the end like that. Mm. And, and that's how they would do it. And it's like, all that stuff is yeah. just with humans. That's just ridiculous. Like there were <laughs> not, you know what I mean? Like that there's no, there's it's so we're so imprecise in that way. Most yeah. of us anyway. Yeah. And that's actually a really good point for traders to think about, I guess, is me- like when you were measuring your trades in your journal, we also, with our systems, we kind of measure the market, right? And measure the movements and all that. There's a lot of measuring things to think about in trading, not only measuring your performance, but measuring um, the way that your system sort of measures where the market's headed and, yeah, and that yeah, sort yeah. of stuff. I so, think yeah, there's a tendency to, to like uh, say, oh, I have like four entry you know, criteria and did I follow three out three out of four and then try and create a score out of that? And I think it gets way too technical. So I think that uh, the yeah. sooner you can make it, yeah, the better. And I think it really depends on your personality too. If you prefer the bigger, you know, scale, whatever, use that. But uh, for me, I'm more of a you know minimalist, so I, I use the four, whatever. Four, yeah, yeah. I used to have a spreadsheet like you're saying, where we had uh, thirteen or fifteen. I can't remember. It was thirteen or fifteen different characteristics had to be achieved yeah, and, I did and we would too. say yeah. yeah before i would take a trade yeah. yeah and then but then like it but it had to be like 10 out of 13 or whatever or 9 out of 15 or something like that but what i found was that actually some of those character and this is it gets to your point of minimalism right what i found i didn't realize this till much later <laughs> some of those characteristics like in my checklist to take a trade some of those characteristics would clump together. So they would all be like off, like they wouldn't be Uh triggered. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so basically what, what, what it was happening was by throwing away most of the, you know, three quarters of the checklist and just using a few, Mm -hmm. I had a much better strategy. (laughs) (laughs) You know what I mean? Like there were, in other words, you cut the fat away on the, of the 15 different check on the checklist. Right. Mm-hmm. And those like three or four, whatever it was, I can't remember. I think it was like three or three of them that would actually were the best indicators of whether or not I should take a trade. Mm-hmm. So the other stuff was all fluff or like, it was kind of like people use, you know, they use like the stochastic and the MACD for confirmation <laughs> yeah, or, yeah. you know what I mean? Like it was kind of like that. Like it was, it was like, well, that's just, it's, oh, there's overlap, you know, they're mm-hmm. shared. They say in statistics, it's shared variance. Where they're, they're both accounting for the same thing. So it's, mm-hmm. it was ridiculous. So yeah, measuring is really 
an important topic for traders, I guess, in, in many different aspects. It's fascinating, actually. Yeah, it is. It, it, there's a real tendency, tendency to get really specific and technical about it. But I think if you take a bigger, more holistic view of it, I think, I think it becomes a lot more useful. Definitely. Yep. All right. Thanks, Walter. All information in this podcast is for educational and informational purposes only and is not trading or investment advice.